All right, sis. Sing a jingle. Spotlight fashion with T.S. Madison. Yeah. Hallelujah. All with the show. You try, girl. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to another Spotlight Session with none other than me, T.S. Madison. Honey, listen, tonight is going to be a little bit different. Uh, all my Spotlight Sessions are different from each other, but tonight is going to be different, different. Tonight, I'm going to be spotlighting someone very special. Um, and she's not only special because I love her so, she's special because... She has hidden gifts. And I want to talk about things with her that might frighten some of you out there. People that possess the gift of sight. And I mean sight beyond the grave. Join us now. My guest is Lakara with the gift. Oh my God, Lakara with the gift. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to a spotlight session with none other than me, T.S. Madison. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited about the series you're doing. I, well, I'm trying to do a little something out there for people that I, you know that I that I find interesting. You know, interesting enough that I'd like to really sit down and do like a a, a good one on one. Thank you. I appreciate you know, that. And introduce the folks out there to the world who those people are. You know. And speaking of that, I'm just gonna jump right on into it all right lakara yes who are you <laughs> i love it <laughs> uh well for your audience uh i am dr lakara foster i am a minister and i am a medium and we're going to talk exactly about what that means i'm going to give you a chance to ask some questions because i've watched these other spotlights and Oprah better watch out, honey, because oh, you listen, are Oprah doing the thing. thing. <laughs> listen, Oprah ain't got nothing to worry about, honey. Her balls ain't big as mine. <laughs> her dick might be. Oh, her balls ain't big. Wait a minute. Hold on. We, we, we being nice on this show. Oh, that's right. This is the nice show. This yes. is the nice show. It's yes. late night, though, so we can do what the, we want. <laughs> but, Lakar, you know, yes. all jokes aside, um, you said you're a minister and a medium at the yes. same time. Yes. I find that very interesting, being that we African-American people associate medium and uh, spiritual connection with witchcraft and voodoo. Right, right. Um, I just want to jump right on into it. Uh, what is it that you actually do so that I can formulate these questions correctly as a minister? What do you do as a minister? Do you okay. preach to a congregation? Yes. So I am a minister at the Vision Church of Atlanta mm. and I also am over the women's ministry. So my job is to, you know, direct the women's ministry. We do different activities and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, I got my call to ministry a couple of years ago and my father has always said, you know, you're going to preach the word of God. And I was like, OK, I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, but sure enough, I did get the call to do that. Um, and as far as being a medium, and I'll talk to you more in depth about that, um, that's just the gift that I've had my entire life, you know, that I have, um, it has obviously enhanced as I've gotten older. I can't say when I was a kid or even a teenager, I knew how to articulate it. Mm -hmm. I just knew uh, that I saw things and, and heard things and not see with my visual eyes, uh, but see, if you will, uh, in my mind's eye, different things that other people weren't seeing. Mm. And so really, honestly, the way I look at it is that the two go hand in hand, you know. And as African-Americans, one thing that I always, you know, encourage people is to really find out who we were prior to coming to America or being enslaved um, as Africans in America. And people will see that the, we, we had seers, we had prophets, we had mediums, not that they were called that, but we were operating in these gifts and operating fully in these gifts um, prior to you know coming to America and being told uh, that this was of the devil, you know, and as far as voodoo and, and witchcraft, those are practices and those are religions. And there are people who claim to be witches and that is what they practice. And there are people that, uh, you know, practice voodoo as a religion and that's what they do. But I am a Christian. And so that's what I practice. So you say you're a Christian and that's what you practice. And mm -hmm. then you also say that, you know, get into the depths of where we derived from yeah. as a culture, excuse yeah. me, not as a culture, but as a people, yes. as our ancestral uh, lines date back before us, uh, predating us coming here to America. Right. 
Christianity was not a part of that. Was right. oh, you know we didn't have anything really to do with that as African people. Right. Right. So how I'm going to be devil's advocate, like I'm always like I always am. <laughs> on the man. Yeah. How can a person be a Christian, mm -hmm. a medium, mm -hmm. because the Bible specifically uh, speaks of uh, mediums and um, uh, seers. Right. Um, it speaks specifically about that and witches. Suffer ye not a witch to tarry. Mm -hmm. um, it, it also says don't c uh, consult mediums. And right. I think I think uh, one of the prophets was told by uh, God. I don't want to make because I'm not a, bi a biblical scholar. <laughs> okay. But I remember in, uh, reading something about one of the, the the biblical prophets was told not to seek the medium or the king or one of them, and he did. Yeah. Uh, it, and 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 and. and God didn't like it. Right. So, you know, when you hear these stories and you and you hear this stuff and then you you come into your calling and then you are minister and all, what is the biggest backlash you have received? Right. Uh, pretty much what you said, right? But, you know, my doctoral studies allowed me to really dig deep into what it means to be a medium and also be a Christian. And so one of the things that I discovered uh, in, in my studies uh, was really understanding you know, when we talk about this King James version of the Bible, mm. you know, this was written in, he was commissioned to write it in 1604 and he wrote it in 1611. But then you really have to know why, like why did the, the Bibles or the stories in the Bibles that predated this particular version, none of them spoke ill about mediums or witches or whatever, right? There was no no derogatory meaning toward any of it. Um, and or so, homosexuals, excuse me, I didn't mean to <laughs> um, But King James, actually, you know, he had an issue with witches because they did not want him to come to the where they were, to the country where they were. Mm. So they put a hex on his boat um, to stop him or his wife from coming. Um, to where they were because they knew once he got there they were going to be in control of the religion and they were going to try to you know kill the witches and all these things um and so he was really upset that they put a hex on his boat and admitted that they put a hex on his boat and you know it was a lot of you know things happening so when he got his opportunity to write his version of the bible he said okay i don't want y'all fooling with these witches and then he lumped in the mediums and the the psychics and all of that so people really have to understand the history because prior to this there was no derogatory mention of it right and then really understanding when i when we talk about being a christian or follower you know following christ we have to look at one uh what christ was doing right so we look at the fact that christ after he uh died was resurrected but came to show himself in the spirit to the disciples and to mary magdalene which means how else were they going to see the spirits if they too weren't mediums if they too weren't able to you know, understand and, and feel the energy and tap into the energy. And, you know, for me, when Christ says greater works, will you do? These are the greater works. And there's a reason why I'm doing the greater works. And we'll talk more about that as well. Whoa. I mean, I mean, that's, that's a good big answer. Yeah. It's a good big answer because, you know, I, Black people don't play by that. By that. <laughs> black people are really, you know, are really deep on like, ooh, oh, yeah. you know, mm, yeah, no, no, don't touch it, you know, like, you know, my mom is the same way, and 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 I'm gonna go into a personal place. Yeah. When I first met you, I met you at Vision. Yeah. Visions, not the church, the, the gala, the, the, the gala. Yeah. And you. You had no idea who I was, right? Because you really not a girl. You really not deep on the internet with stuff like that. You had no idea who I was. Uh, I was getting an award. Um, you walked up to me, and you said to me. In detail, you have such a great spirit about you and a very positive light. However, I feel that you've lost someone recently. And you know, usually that's a cliche term, right? From people that are medium, right? Or per, or claim to be me right recently you've lost someone um um that's a closely it's like a uh aunt a sister ish it's somewhere it's maternal it's somewhere in the maternal space right and you said is your mother here i said yes my mother's here you said did your mother re recently did your mother unexpectedly lose her sister yeah and i said yes 
and you said your mother's sister has messages that she wants to give her. She loves you yeah. to death, but she has messages that she wants to give to her sister. Yeah. And I told you, after we hugged about it, and I told you, I was, I was standing, I was getting almost deeply emotional about it. I told you, I said, well, look, Cara, mm -hmm. my mother's not going to receive that. Right. I told you that. Yeah. I said, my mother is not going to receive that information from you because it's just not going to happen. Right. Because she says that's witchcraft and it's... Right. She's just not going to receive that. I said, but you can tell me. Yeah. Or you can communicate with me or if, or if, because I'm, I, this is my thing. I'm open to understand that God didn't just create earth and that was it. Right. He created all the planets on the outside. He created other life forms, other places. Yeah. I just believe in a whole bunch of things that make sense. Yeah. You know, and for me, we all have an intuition, a spiritual intuition, a spiritual God, a spiritual connection to something, to people, because you can be thinking about someone across the road. Yeah. And they'll call you out of the blue. Yeah. And, and, and so this is what I tell people as far as being a medium. Um, one, the first thing I tell people is I don't talk to dead people, mm -hmm. right? There is no such thing as dead. All we are are energy. We're energy before we enter these bodies, while we're in them, and when we depart from them. And my gift allows me to tap into that energy. Now, when I first started, because I've been doing this for a long time, you know, um, privately, but God said, no, you got to go public with this. And I'm like, well, why? Like, why do I need to go public with it? But once I went public with it, I understood the need for people to heal. Mm. And I understood, you know, I, I just recently, I, I was telling a group of people that grief is a thief. Right. And so my job and I believe that what God has sent me to do is to be able to help people get unstuck out of that grief. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for me, it, it's, it's nothing spooky. It's nothing scary. And I asked God, I said, God, why this gift? You know, there are so many other, because I want to sing. Now, y'all done heard that intro, right? I, <laughs> and I ain't going to get no fans for my singing on that intro. You tried, girl. I did try. Hell, I want to sing too, <laughs> you know, but my voice is, you'll never find. <laughs> but I asked God, why this gift, right? And in knowing, you know, what people are going to say or the backlash. And God said, and I was, I was in a funeral talking to God, right? And, and, and I'm, we, you know, people are, you know, just having this funeral. And God said, I promised my people eternal life how will how will they know that i've kept my promise if the medium doesn't demonstrate the gift good argument yeah how will we know that life goes on after we pass if there is you know no one to communicate that with that's a good point um but then there's so many oh god i don't want to make this thing about about deciphering the uh, inconsistencies with the the biblical text. I, I just the, it, it speaks about you know you can't speak to people on the other side, and then it says about you, when people die, they're sleeping, and the, like when he returns, the dead shall rise, and it's it's, just like, it's so many things. Like I'm just so conf I'm really right confused about things that I was taught as yeah. a child yeah and that's why i think you you know when you talked about reconciling our african spirituality with our christianity and i find it so interesting that so many more people are even turning more to their african you know spirituality because i honestly just don't feel like we were taught accurately um in terms of christianity you know i don't always and and i tell people i didn't grow up in the church i grew up in god mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um and so for me there was not i didn't know a whole lot of religious teachings, you know? And so there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, gay bashing or, you know, talking against my gift and all of these things. So I didn't, ha and I, and I, again, I feel like that was very intentional because I don't think that God, you know, I just believe God was like, we're not going to have time to unpack all of that. Right. To have to deal with being queer and being a medium and all that. Like, nope, I'm good with it. I don't have a concern with it. I don't believe God has a concern with it, but I just go ahead. So I don't mean to cut you off because you, you speak about being a medium about queerness. Yeah. So are you also, under the LBGT umbrella? I am under the LGBT umbrella. Oh, okay. So you have many gifts. <laughs> <laughs> a mess. Uh, well, you're not going to make a, yeah, make a funny. Yeah, no. <laughs> but so, okay. All right. Oh, God. There are going to be so many comments under this video. Yeah. 
trying to dissect and discredit and 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 make analogies to why this is this and this is is, is not for me personally lakara when after you told me that 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 someone from the other side was trying well, well my aunt right was trying to have, was trying to communicate with my mother yes and you said words like my mother he says your mother has been grieving for a long time like a, less, less a, a constant, she cries for her she cries for yes. her and you said she hears her crying for her all the time yeah and you said that she wants her to stop it yeah and she wants to speak to her yeah what do you say to people who says things like um well why would the spirit speak to you and not to me uh, because this is my gift. That's like asking, well, why can't I sing? Or why can't I do hair? Or why can't I? And I think I, I, I always say that Did God is down here. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I always say um, God only gives us the gifts that God can trust us with. Mm. Right. So God knew that God could trust me with this gift that I would go out and do this work come what may. Right. Doesn't matter about the backlash. Doesn't matter about what people say. I am going to do this work. And I, I would truly believe that whatever we're called to do, that we would have that type of conviction to do it, mm. you know? So I, I don't, you know, not concerned with the, the naysayers or the people, um, you know, who, who have had something to say uh, because like hundreds of people have been helped, yes. you know? And I will say, I, I give the example of this uh, read. I had did a live reading in New Orleans and it was about a hundred people there. And there was a, and oftentimes spirit comes to me before, even before I enter into a room, I'm sometimes, okay, I got to find this person who's connected to spirit, like with your aunt, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I wrote down, uh, someone lost a baby and I wrote down a number three. And so immediately when the, you know, the event starts, there's three African-American women, they're older women, right? And they sit up there, they got their arms folded. Oh cold, yes, the and skeptics. They just, so yes. those are very skeptics, okay. Very skeptical, right? Okay. And you know, they said, and so immediately I said, you three are sisters, right? They said, yes. I said, there's a fourth sister who's on the other side. They said, yes. And I said, that's who wants to speak to you all. So I'm giving them the messages. They're crying, I'm crying, the audience is crying because this is what the sister needs them to know. So then I asked the you know what, one who's closer to me on the end, I said, how do you connect to the number three? I said, the number three and the baby. And she says, I, my daughter was three months old when she passed. And I said, your sister wants you to know that your daughter is with her. This woman says to me, I have been grieving the loss of my daughter for 50 years. She says, this is the first moment that I have felt peace around the loss of my daughter. I'm not even 50. You understand that this woman has been grieving long before you and I even got here. But for God to lead us up to this moment, this moment in time, and they weren't going to come. But what I found so interesting, because they were, you know, talking back to me and stuff, and they were, we were dialoguing. She said, we weren't going to come because we didn't believe in this. And ironically, though, she says, but as I was getting dressed, I asked my sister, if this is real, please show up. And she said, and I smelled her. She said, as I'm sitting there getting dressed, I smell her. And so that is spirit showing, you know, or demonstrating that I am here, which I believe that people, we all have this, right? So I, I'll tell people all the time, you know, ask for how you want them to show up. Maybe it's in the song. Maybe it's in a, a, a smell. Maybe it's in something else, you know, uh, uh, the butterfly or the cardinal. And spirit will do that just to confirm and reconfirm and reconfirm that they are still with us, just not in the physical. All right. So how do you know <laughs> when it's actually the spirit that's connected to the person? Like, how do you know? Like, out of a room full of that, right? you just knew it was those those three women there in the front or did the spirit say the three women sitting in the front or it, it no it, and it actually it comes differently right so that came it was like i'm the fourth sister that's what i heard mm, right mm. in with them now the other day i'm giving a reading just to kind of give you an example and i say spirit is just you know with me all day and i'm giving a reading and i asked the young lady i said um how do you connect with the pickup truck i said the red pickup truck she said, no, no connection. I said, it's making me, I'm literally hearing the Sanford and Son, right? She's like, no, I don't have a connection. So I said, 
okay, just like I, you know, I always say, say, okay, it could be for my next reading, right? Nope, not a problem. Literally, I hang up with her, and in my very next reading, the the woman she says, I, I want to connect with my dad, right? She it just instantly starts connecting. I want to connect with my dad. I said, okay. I said, how do you connect to the pickup truck? And she says, oh my God, my dad had a pickup. My dad drove a pickup truck. I said, a red pickup truck. She says, oh my. And she starts crying like immediately. And I said, because he's making me hear the Sanford and Son thing. And she's bawling on the phone. And she says, that was his favorite show. She said, I have watched every episode of Sanford and Son because of my dad. So it's like, I have this energy going on. I just got to figure out who it belongs to. Ah, uh, you got to channel it correctly. Yeah. So may I ask this? And, yeah. and, 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 and without any disrespect. Yeah. Have you ever gave any uh, reading or, or, or connection to a person that just was that they deemed false or or no never mm. no and because i tell people like it's not lakara like i am really just the vessel you know and the information that i'm giving is what spirit want and i always say we don't necessarily uh get what we want to hear but it's always a message that we need to hear right so is it one spirit that you that you hear or is it multiple spirits because I want to know, growing up as a child, mm -hmm. were you bombarded by voices, bombarded by... Because you, you watch these television programs and you see this, you see Hollywood depicted as when people are, are psychics and mediums. It's, it's a constant hearing of voices all the time. Well, for me, and, and that may be for some people, because some people may have that gift, right, where they actually hear. Um, mine doesn't necessarily work like that. You know, I am really truly just tapped into energy. Not every now and again, I will hear, like for example, uh, in, in my book, I don't know if you, I don't think we can see this. Okay, so this young lady called and I said, who has the D name? And she goes, I, I don't know who has the D name. And I said, they just specifically said Dennis. And she goes, oh my gosh, that's my uncle. She said, that is my, my father's brother who was more like a father to me than my father. But how did she say that she don't know the D name? But, oh, that happens all the time. Girl, that happens all the time. Like, I'll go down the thing, and people will be like, I don't know, I don't know, and, and then it'll click for them. And so sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll tell people, meditate before you call so that you can be open to, you know, but it happens all the time. Or people will text me back. You see, like, I got numbers right here. So people will text me back and say, oh, I know exactly what this was. Like, we'll connect to some things in the reading, but then they'll call back and say, oh, my gosh, like, such and such's birthday was March 27. You know, you see the 327 here. So sometimes it takes people, and that's why I would take a picture of it, and I'll send it to them, and I'll tell them, you know, let this sit with you because there'll be some things that will, other things that will come up. Oh, so as a child, was this, was this uh, a little bit uh, different? Because now I see you have a book, you write this stuff down. Yeah. So as a child, what was it? Like what, how, when did it happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know that there was an exact moment. I just know that I would know things like, like I would know, you know, if my, if my parents were away, I would know exactly when they were going to be home. You know, and no matter what they said, I'd be like, nah, they real close. Or, you know, there was no such thing as pop quiz for me. I, was, I already knew when the teacher was going to do a pop quiz. So there, but I wasn't able to articulate this, this knowing really, if that makes sense. Um, and I remember, and I was actually thinking about this on the way here, and I probably was about maybe, uh, maybe 22 or 23 at the time, and I was driving, and it was like one of my, you know, earlier times coming to Atlanta, but we we're actually going up to the mountains. And my friend is asleep in the car, and I have a vision of this deer and like runs across, right? It's just literally just a vision. Mm -hmm. And then I hear the Holy Spirit say, hit the deer, right? Just hit the deer. And I'm like, what was that, right? Literally 30 minutes later, a deer crosses and I just hit the deer, right? And you know, it bounces off the car and it goes, you know, in front of a truck or something. And it's at night. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, we're, we're screaming, we, you know, but we almost took the cabin where we're going. <laughs> so Ooh. what's so interesting is the next, two days later when we're driving back down that same row, we see the deer, right? Like kind of on the side. If I had turned to the right, we'd have went off the side. If I had turned to the left, we would have hit that oncoming truck. And that's why Holy, the Holy Spirit said, hit, hit the, the deer. deer. 
And so that's very difficult for me. But I always say, like, I'm sure there are times when you have gotten a message, right? Or you have heard something. You say, okay, I don't need to go here tonight. Or I need to, you know. Well, I mean, that's definitely a big part of, of my story and a big part of my career. Um, everything that has ever happened to me in my career and in my story, every time I've went viral. Right. Okay something has been on my show and if people out there are watching and have been following me you guys wow. know that i've been saying this stuff for years wow anytime that i went viral or anything that has been intricate an intricate part of me elevating anywhere in my career nice do and i'm going to be candid okay <laughs> Go very ahead. candid Go ahead. do it now bitch turn that video camera on don't say this to this say it to this Wow. Go back, delete that video, do another one. Wow. This is the one. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all going to fuss me out by this. But that new weave 22 inches video that I did <laughs> that, that, that catapulted me into eyes that were, that weren't even paying me any attention. Wow. Uh-huh. Erase it. Do it again. Erase it. Do it. This is it right here. Wow. Even though it was, it was nudity and this and the other, but that six seconds changed my entire direction of my life. Wow, yeah, and 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 it's because you're listening and you're paying attention. And my my thought and my belief is that like our loved one, spirit, the Holy Spirit, however we want to call it, are always trying to give us guidance. They're always trying to guide us and and always protecting us, you know, and where we should be going and where we should not be going. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because there have been times that I did not listen, mm -hmm. you know, but it's still there was a protection put in place, you know, just in case I didn't listen. Because as you know, Lakar, I've never been uh, shy to say that I've uh, been uh, involved in the uh, sex work industry. Right. You know, and I, there's that is a very dangerous place, mm -hmm. especially at the time when I was young. I was in my 20s, early 20s. Right. And I was walking the beat and out there you must listen to your spirit or your mm. life will be taken from you wow there's times that the spirit has told me don't go on this corner don't stand here don't don't get in that car right or you know don't take that money right i mean it like literally i can hear it scream at me yeah. bitch don't do it yeah 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 some people may say oh well common sense will tell you no it's it, no. it's sometimes it's bigger than common sense because it's been times that it's been things that I felt was going to be perfect. And it was like, no, mm -hmm. don't do it. Do not do it. Right. Wow. Or this is, this is it. Yeah. This is the last. I remember me. <laughs> I remember my last night walking the beat. Mm -hmm. And I've told this story on, on a show called Hey Queen. The spirit told me, don't do it. Mm. Don't go there. I went anyway. The spirit was riding me the whole time I was there. Right. Don't get in this car. Don't the whole time. Wow. Bitch, you done. You're finished. Wow. You're done with that. Yeah. Don't go do that. Don't do that. And it was very just like I said. Bitch, you done. Yeah. You done with that life. Don't right? do that. Yeah. Child, I'm just finna see if I still got it. Mm. I'm finna see. Let me. Whatever connection it is, uh, I don't care how, what anybody thinks about me out there that's watching the video. It, I'm very connected to to it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, sexually, all this stuff. I, I I've, I've always been able to make. I've always been very successful in 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 that biz in that field. Right. Making the money because I've always listened. Right. I've always and even crossing over into being a public figure or, 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 or internet celebrity or whatever it is that people want to classify me as it, I've always been spoken to on which direction to go, who not to communicate with. There's been people that I might have had a connection with as friends Yeah, that the spirit told me, cut it. That's it. And I that's didn't a, know how to explain it to I them. I got chills. Yeah. Cause, cause that's what happens, you know? And it's like, we will fight for relationships and fight for stuff that God has said, no, that season is done or that season is over or that job is over, you know? Um, and just being able, when you are in tune. And so when you say, when people say, why, why you have the gift or why you, 
because God knows I'm going to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, you know, I got, oh, that's what we're doing? Okay, then that's what we're doing. I'm not going to be, I've, I've been disobedient, mm -hmm. right? And we know what that looks like when we have yes. been. So even in this, when God says, I need you to do this for my people, me not doing it would be disobedient. So I can't care about the backlash, right? I can't care about people say, oh, that's demonic. Oh, that's, I know what God is doing. And I am watching people get free. I am watching people heal. I'm watching people find closure. I'm watching people get peace. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's, that's God's work. It is God's work. Now, earlier I was asking my staff out there, do they have any questions on uh, just like, what would they ask you? Yeah. And one, uh, uh, Kiera said in particular, what made you, this is devil's advocate here, right. a, a mix with Kiera's question, what made you take a gift that was given to you mm -hmm. and monetize off of it? Mm -hmm. Well, one, the scripture tells us that our, 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 the gift will make room for us, mm. right? That's number one. Hey, Basha. And then number two is, just like you said, you know, these are your tech people. They're going to get paid for their gift, mm -hmm. right? Your makeup person got paid for her gift. Yes. Your hair person got paid. We are supposed to get paid for, you get paid for your gift. Like this, you have an amazing gift and you have figured out how to monetize it. Not that you even had to figure out how to monetize it, right? When you say yes, the gift will, te will, will it will monetize itself for you. Mm. Because mm. I have opportunities that have come and are coming my way that I know it's God, right? I know my little simple self, I couldn't put this together, you know? And, and honestly, like, I give people readings all the time. Like, so if I'm in the grocery store or if I'm in the Walmart I'm, and, and, and God says, go and tell this person, because one of your staffers says, like, how do you know what's real and what's not real and stuff? But if God tells me to go over there and tell them, so I'm not going to charge them for that. I'm going to go and give the word. I'm going to go mind my business, you know? Now, if they come back and tap you on the shoulder and slide some in your hand. That, that's a little different. That's right? different. <laughs> you know, that's a hand, mom. Yeah, go a little something. A little something, know? right? But, you know, one thing that my, my mentor and friend, Dr. Daniel Black, uh, he's a professor at Morehouse and Clark, and he's in episode six of my YouTube series, The Gift, where he actually kind of breaks this thing down. Um, one thing that he says is, you know, the, the universe isn't going to be a moral compass for our gifts, right? You have the gift. You have to decide if you're going to use the gift for good or for bad. Mm. That's anybody. So can you use, oh, wait a minute, hold on now. Let me dig now. <laughs> I want to dig. You say you can use, you you have to decide whether you're going to use your gift for good or bad. Can you use your gift for bad? Well, my, and my, when I say my, the gift and I'll talk, I'll speak to that as well. That's anybody, right? You could be a good mechanic. You could be a shady mechanic. You could be a good doctor. You could be a shady doctor, right? Any of us can be good or not good with our gifts. To me, what it looks like in, in this spiritual realm, doing this, in this spiritual work, what not using the gift for good looks like one, I, I don't believe in manipulating people's will, right? I don't think that, you know, so when people talk about curses or spells or, you know, they're going to pay somebody to put a spell, I don't believe in that, right? Because God gave us free will. And so why would, why would we want to take somebody's will away? So I don't believe in that. And I don't, I personally don't think that that's good spiritual work. That's my thought on it. You know, um, I also like, so I, I will say most people will call, they'll get a, a reading, right? This woman called, she wanted a reading. She wanted to connect with her son, which, you know, people, I usually tell people not to tell me who they want to connect with, just kind of let spirit guide us into who we're connecting with. And so she was, you know, it was, it was very, it was very, tra it was traumatic because he was killed, which mm -hmm. he let me know. And I let her know what he was letting me know. And I told her also, I said, you, um, I said, you, you, when they show me the pill bottle, it has a couple of different meanings. But in this case, that is my symbol for someone wanting to commit suicide. Uh oh, I'm sorry. That is my symbol for someone wanting to commit suicide. And I asked her, I said, were you thinking about harming yourself? And she said, I was. And I said, your son said, you can't come to where he is. You have to stay for the other children. And then, you know, we got off the phone and she texted me back and she said to me, you know, I was going to, you know, commit suicide. She's like, I was going to do it this weekend. Take pills. Yeah, this weekend. She said, and the only reason I'm not going to do it is because my son, who's on the other side, told me I could not, right? And so this was a Thursday. So we talking about Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We could have lost someone, you know, and I didn't know her. 
so a couple about a week or so later she messages me and she says I want to connect to my son again and I told her you don't need me to do that you can connect to your son this is your son right mm. ask him to show himself or, or not show himself but ask him you know in, in, in whatever way you can receive it. Yeah. Because this is your son and he's with you. Yeah. And so my thing is, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to keep taking people's money, keep taking people's money, keep taking as a way to curb the curb the pain or curb the hurt or, you know, because that to me is is not moral. We've done it. I've, I've talked to you. I've spoke to you. I You know, I've ex ex told you how it works and now you can do it too. Okay. Okay. So you don't abuse that. It's no. just basically, you don't abuse it, no. you know? No, no. Because somebody could say, oh, I want to connect to my uh, to my grandma. Yeah. And that may not be the spirit that's coming through. It may, And that's what this lady right here, like, she was like, jumped on the phone, I want to connect to my aunt and my stepdad. That's not who came through. But what did come through was her, this uncle for her, right? And I said, how do you connect to the baby, right? She said she lost the baby. Okay, I said, your uncle is bringing through the baby. Now, if you look at the numbers here, she tells me, that the 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 daughter died on six two six on June twenty sixth. So that's the numbers, right? Six two six. Like it's all in the numbers. Like everything is right here. And so I was telling her, whatever guilt you're holding on to around the passing of your child, your child has come through to say, let it go, mm -hmm. right? And I said, you know, it happened twenty seven years ago, right? All of this is right here. And I said, she wants you to let that go. I said, there's not a tombstone for her. And she's like, like, how do you know this? Because this is what they're telling me. I said, but she doesn't even want you to feel guilty that, that's, that there's not a tombstone, right? I said, because they come to say, those markers are for us. They're with us. They don't care about these markers and stuff, but if that's how we choose to honor them, they're okay with that as well. Right, because the body is not, I mean, the spirit is not in the ground. No. No. And so people will feel, you know, people who can't afford a tombstone or it's taking the family some time or something, they actually feel bad about that. We can't afford this. And this, you know, tombstones, I guess from what I understand, they're not cheap. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, but it, it is a way. And, and she said, she said, I didn't even know I needed this. She said, I was calling because I wanted to connect to my aunt or my, my stepdad because my stepdad just passed. She said, I didn't even know. I, she said, I, I, I cry and I feel guilty about it. And she said, I just realized that this is what I needed. Would you consider yourself, uh, instead of using the word uh, medium, would you consider yourself a prophetess? Um, it, like, so honestly, like for me, it's all the same, right? So I have some, you know, this, this guy in my church, like he came up to me and he starts telling me stuff, right? And he's like, you know, he's just really kind of getting to a place where he's operating in his prophetic gift, if, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's the same that I would do, you know, if I'm in the, in the marketplace, if you will, right? But he comes up to me and he starts telling me these things and everything he's, every time I see him, I say everything you say it everything you said there's no difference in what we're calling it you know and i really want people to stop getting hung up on what we're calling right it. right because and I, I asked you that question so mm -hmm. that i can slide really easily over into this yes to the people there are a lot of people out there who uh will go and get a, a prophetic ministering over their life from right. the church but yet feel some type of way towards you yeah and it's all in this it all works in the same space to yeah. me yeah it's it's all energy it's all where we you know you're receiving the the messages from the source and i will say that i've had like a you know a lot of african-american people call me and have called me and a lot of them will say you know I would never just go see a psychic or a medium. Right. But because you said you are a Christian or because you said you believe in God or because you said you follow Christ, this is why I'm comfortable doing this. My wig was acting like <laughs> one. the spirit told me to pull the wig down right now. A mess. <laughs> so, so that's what people would say, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, look, all right, like, listen, I, I, you don't got to sell me a bag of ass. <laughs> I know the ass outside yes, is yes. real, you know, and it's because I have my own personal connection to whatever it's spirit or God or entity or whatever it is, you know, um, that's, that's assigned to me. Yeah. Because I do feel like that we are all, you know, as human beings, are assigned. Yeah. It's like our guardian angels. And we, we're just, and just as well as we're assigned to guardian angels, we're also ass, assigned 
dark forces against us too. Now, you know, and I, so I think for me, honestly, um, and, I, and it's not to negate that, right? And I always tell people, I, I am only assigned to deal with the light, mm -hmm. right? So there might be people, and I don't know, because I have not asked another medium this, that may be assigned to deal with, you know what I mean, something else, but I am only assigned to deal with the light. Right. I mean, and, 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 I, and I understand that, but I just, it's just been, when you have those attacks, sometimes those attacks are so strong, you know that they come from a spiritual place. Mm -hmm. They're not coming from no place of just like your car breaking down or your 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 house caught on fire. It's a, that stuff means spiritual warfare. Yeah, it's 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 spiritually inclined. Yeah, you know, especially when your spirit is a bright spirit and your destination mm -hmm. is somewhere that's that's big. Yeah, and that's why you have to be so careful. Like you said, when when spirit tells you or when God tells you. You can't see those people no more. You can't do that anymore, right? It is because when you when you are a light, right, you will attract the darkness. You I will. actually said this, right? You will attract the darkness. You will attract people who are unhealed, you know? Um, but again, it's all energy. And that's why, because you are so spiritual, you have to protect. We, I mean, we all do, right? But you have to protect your energy yep. because energy will attach itself to you. Yes. And, and that's, to me, what a, a dark force is, when that, that energy attaches itself to Trying you. Trying to suck that stuff from mm -hmm. you. Now, Lakar, yes. I'm going to ask you something right here in the middle of the show that I want you I want to know if you're comfortable with. Are you comfortable with demonstrating to the people anything it, that you do or a little bit of what you do with me? Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? Because, again, it's, it's all energy. So if it comes up for one of your staff, like... It just kind of is. Get ready, guys. So, <laughs> so she's already put the warning out here, honey. So we'll tap in and we'll see. So there's I... two people. There's two people in the room. There's Oliver in the room. There's Kier in the room. There's myself in the room. And Chi Chi's upstairs. So I don't know what energy, right. you know, may come. But just write it down, honey. Yeah. <laughs> so even when I came in, I wanted to know if um, it was a couple of things um, that were coming to me. But um, did somebody lose a grandmother? Did one of you all lose your grandmother? You lost your grandmother? Is I it Chi Chi? Huh? It's Chi Chi. Mm -hmm. You did lose your grandmother. No, no I'm not Chi Chi. Oh, upstairs. Chi Chi. Oh, Chi Chi wow. did. Yeah. Okay. And uh. Chi Chi's not been living with me. Chi Chi hasn't been living with me for a while because he went home. Right. He, he lost his grandmother. Shut up. Did he just lose his grandmother? About a year. It's been. It's been. Wow. It's just completed. A Was year. she instrumental in raising him? Uh, uh, Oliver, tell Chi Chi to come downstairs. Because that energy was coming through very strong. Like, and is that the person? That's who gre greeted me at the door, right? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So can we get him and just, just see what's coming up? Because that energy was very strong when I walked in. Okay. And we can keep talking while we... Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's coming. You go here, Alan. You know, the, the... <laughs> yeah. So, it... so... So while he's coming, I'll just tell your audience a little bit about, again, how it works for me. Because I said, again, I'm not talking to dead people. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, only uh, it, I'm tapping into the energy that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any control over who comes through. But typically who comes through is because they have a message or they just kind of want to pass a message to um, whoever I'm interacting with or whoever I'm there with. Um, I may be able I may write some things down. Um, and it's so funny you said that because. So when I draw the house, that is my symbol for movement, right? Mm -hmm. um, or moving, or as in physical location move. And you said he just moved. Did he? He lives with you? No. Well, he's back here with me for a while. You know. You know. I'm I'm helping him get his stuff together. Okay. Whatever. But he's back with me for just for a while. Okay. You know, he's in between places because he, okay. he went home because his grandmother had passed away, and then he came back. Okay. Can you, can you, can you come just a little bit closer? You know, I know you don't. You're not. You don't have to get on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> But just so I can see you. And so this is kind of like my tail sign right here, right? When it's like spirit is like, hey, we got some things. But they tell me you just lost your grandmother. Was, was your grandmother instrumental in raising you? Mm -hmm. Okay, because it, it, the, the energy was saying like I raised him, right? Um, hmm. So was it like, so what they're telling me is like, like a son, right? Were you like a son to her? Okay, because it was like not like a grandson. It was it was a closer relationship, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a little brother? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you all close in age? Yeah, he, he like I got two little brothers. Okay. I got one that's thirty, and then I got one that's going to be twenty-three on the second of February. Okay. And and how old are you? Thirty-six. 
Okay, so okay, so the two, so you two, the thirty and the thirty two are closer together because she was bringing up you two. Um, did you just get into it with one of them? Okay, somebody did they get into it with each other or something? Because she's showing me like something like this. It's kind of like, um, I don't, I don't know what this is. So, well, I'll get back to that. When they show me the wall, that is my symbol for somebody is not talking to someone or someone isn't speaking to someone. Who's not speaking to someone? I mean, my little brother, do, we don't really like have conversations like that. Mm -hmm. like, but it's not like beef. No. Are you not speaking to someone? Where's your mom in this picture? Uh, yeah, I talk to my mom all day. Okay. I don't know what this is because they want to talk about, she wants to bring up the somebody, it was somebody not talking to her. When did she pass? December 2nd, 2018. Okay. Because she's showing me something with the family or some type of, like, uh, for lack of a Will better you term, fall like too? beef. It don't matter how long ago it was. What happened? I saw my second oldest brother. When did that happen? Like a while ago, like 2016. You call me, y'all. Oh, it was early in 2015, like 2008. So it was a while ago. A long time ago. Okay, so I don't know what this is, but she's showing me, and that could be that, but because I, I don't even know why she literally showed me you. Was this the brother that's next to you? Before, before him okay before before you i don't know what this is but she showed me like there was beef if that makes sense and this could really just be her bringing it up and confirming that because this is not something i would know right mm -hmm. i've i don't know that i've ever had a. I i know when i'm listening to you <laughs> i know because i remember he called me it was and we were communicating about it you know they had a really nasty okay it was real nasty right wow um so i don't know like so she doesn't want you to worry about money Right. Like if that's kind of like your everyday concern, like how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? She says to stop worried about it. Does that make sense for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because she's not, she like, she's making me feel like she's going to take care of it. Okay. Like she is assigned to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because she's saying like this, this was my son. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but you got to stop worrying about it though. Is this a constant worry for you? Okay. She's like, um, Oh wow, you know, this is so interesting, right? So you know how they, the, it's like you're in good hands, mm -hmm. right? This is what she's telling me about uh, about Miss Madison here. Right? She's like, you're in good hands. Like, you, you know, the Allstate commercial, like I'm literally hearing the Allstate commercial, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what was so interesting, even when I walked in was, um, you're gonna continue to be blessed. One, because you, you put out so much love, right? And you're surrounded by so much love. But I think you already know that. You're not gonna have to work, like you, not, like 2020, I hope you're ready, right? <laughs> and and I would tell like everybody in here that's connected to you, like stay connected, not as in a ride the gravy train, but as in like when you think about Kevin Hart and how Kevin Hart has been able to like bless the people that have been connected to him, mm -hmm. like stay true, stay loyal. And like, this is like, I always tell my friends, I'll be the workhorse, right? And we gonna all eat, like this is the workhorse. And if you all stay true to your gifts um, and stay connected and stay a family, like, Y'all gonna be good in 2020. I get it. I feel that. Yeah. I yeah. feel it. And and also know that, um, but when she says move or when she says we gotta go this way, or when she says somebody can't come with us, don't challenge her on that. Right? Because like she is gifted with this discernment. Yeah. <laughs> right? If anybody knows, <laughs> Chi Chi knows because he's watching me say, watching me get up and say, Brother, the spirit is telling me. I, I, those be my morning. Sometimes it be my, those be my morning conversation. Yes. Oliver, am I lying? No, ma'am. <laughs> well, why he's Oliver's laughing over there because I get on the phone and I say the spirit is telling me. Yeah. This and yeah. and this is what we need to do. We need to do this. And, and I didn't know that about y'all, obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and, everybody that's connected to me. Yeah. They know that my line to them is whatever. I could call them out the blue. Yeah. Or we could be. In the middle of getting ready to do the show, and I'd be like, "Murder the spirit telling me this." Yeah, yeah. Right, you, you see how I'm at? Yeah, right, Oliver. Wow, the spirit wow. is telling me, girl. Yeah, yeah, and that's why. And I obviously wouldn't know that, but that's why I'm telling your team when she is speaking. No, it's not coming from her earthly vessel. You know, this is spirit speaking directly to her. And, uh, you know, as the leader or the captain of the ship, like, y'all gonna be good. Yeah, we fine. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna be fine. And, and so you know, that's 
you man, you speaking some manifestations into my ear. I'm like, I'm, I'm receiving yeah. all this. Now you giving it to him, and I'm receiving it for me. Yeah, because so, it's, it's so really for 2020, all I got some things coming you in 2020. You got some things coming in 2020, yeah. you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and I know people think that that's cliche, right? But for some people, this is going to be a planting year, right? Mm-hmm. But for those of us who have planted... This is a harvest 17, year. This is a harvest year, and this is a harvest year for you. And so that when, you know, I tell people every year is not going to be your year, mm-hmm. right? But this, because of the relationships that you've made, because you stayed consistent, because you stayed uh, resilient, um, you know, you've already, it, you've already planted it yeah. and it's going to manifest and it's going to unfold. Um, and I do, I don't know what this network is. I don't know if you are talking to a network or dealing with a network right now. Why are you blinking at me like that? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, then. Well, we won't talk about it then. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to talk about it then. I have no idea what you're talking and about, then bro. We, well, next question. But then. is it lucrative? <laughs> <laughs> if I was in communication, would it be lucrative? If you were. Um, here's the thing. If you if you were, mm-hmm. perhaps, um, in, in negotiations, one is make sure that you have excellent representation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and make sure that that representation is fighting for your best interest Mm -hmm. Um, and understanding what you already bring to the table, right? Um, The the name and the persona and the shows and the audience that you have leverage and you have room to negotiate. Does does that make sense for you? I mean, if I were in that situation, yes, it would make perfect sense to me. It would. Everything <laughs> makes perfect sense. We will definitely continue this off air. Yes. So that we can really get deep into some things. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. But I just wanted the people to see, you know, how how it, it comes to you. Yeah. Is there any last thing that you want to say to Chi Chi about his grandmother? Or would you like, like to wait until later on after that? Um, no, I think the main thing really was that when I when I walked in, that was the energy I was feeling. And that's what she said. Like, that's my grandson, but like a son. Not That's what I heard, but I didn't know who it was for, if that makes sense. But really the main thing again is for you really not to worry about anything. I know we bought up money, right? But for you not to worry about every, anything because she's really working. Um, now it's not saying be lazy or, you know, no, whatever. Don't be lazy. <laughs> no, don't it's just be lazy. saying like, no. yeah, like you are planting your seeds, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. Yeah. She'll talk to you later on. Yeah. I don't know about your business. <laughs> Lakara, yes, we've spent almost one hour, and it don't even seem like it, it just was, flew it by. Just flew and see, that by. wasn't that wasn't scary. That wasn't creepy. That wasn't did nothing fall off the wall. Nothing nothing, fell right? off the wall. Well, we don't know what went on upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say, in closing, yes, I'd like to say, you've enlightened me. You've opened my eyes to things. You know, I've I I was never really a skeptic about things because. I know my personal experience and a lot of people out there are skeptics because they won't open up themselves to having a personal experience right. outside of what's solid. Right. There are things that just cannot be explained. Right. Right. Absolutely. There are things Absolutely. that cannot be explained and you have to accept that there are things that cannot be explained. Yeah. Absolutely. So one yeah. day if something is communicated with you, you, you can't explain it. You can't brush that off as, yeah. oh girl. You know, that's my mind playing tricks on me. Right. Oh, that's that brownie I'm eating. <laughs> that's that weed I done smoked. That's that alcohol. Right, right, right. You get what I'm saying? Right. Sometimes there, there, it, it comes, because I feel like that we all have some tuning. In. Yes, absolutely, we some do. Some of us are more fine-tuned than yes. others. Like, I, I be tuned into my, I, it may be all over the place at times. Yeah. But I, I, and I, you know, I don't really... To be honest with you, I don't really even want to get deep off over to trying to tune it in like, well, girl, you know, trying yeah. to no mule hoaring kill, <laughs> no mule hoaring the kill. Right, right, I right. want to just let it flow, whatever. You, because that's not my assignment. Right, right, absolutely, right. And you know what your assignment is. Yeah. And you're on task with doing your my assignment. My assignment is to do exactly what I'm doing, yes. is to entertain folks and, you know, and, 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 and make people laugh, spotlight individuals yeah. like yourself whose assignment is right. to reach outside and let people know. That's your assignment. Yes, ma'am. You were one of the first people that I spoke to about Spotlight Session with T.S. Master. You, yep, sure did. I remember you saying it, yeah. I said, you, I said, I want to, in some kind of way, I want to incorporate bringing you 
you know what I'm saying? But I don't want you to be a judge because I don't, I don't, just not your, you're not into that. Right. You know, you have this thing, but I don't have a space on my, on my channel where I do that. You know, I want to make a specific, I said, I'll get back. How many weeks it went? Week, months. Yeah, it went by, yeah. Months yeah. went by. Yeah. But the Spirit spoke to me then. Then. Yeah. Look horror. Yeah. Start another show. I'm like, yeah. girl, I got, and, I, and, I, and this be the conversation. <laughs> girl, I already got to me. I already got damn shows yeah. on this. I'm tired of putting this stuff together. <laughs> I I got to pay these people to that. Do it. Yeah. All right, girl. I, I do it. Yeah. You know, I love these it. are the conversations that I have with whatever, whether it's me, the other side of me, whether it's in the in the in the mirror in the bathroom, right. whether it's just me laying in the bed or whatever, whether it's a dream or whether I get up like, girl, the spirit just told me because right. Oliver will tell you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> when things ain't gonna be right, even when we were even working on the show. Right. Wow. I said, Myrtle, the spirit told me they're going to be right. Girl, I got you, girl. I got two, two days later. I said, Myrtle, didn't I tell you the spirit told me? <laughs> and I want to whoop my own ass because I didn't listen to the spirit. Right. Yeah. We'll get that. We'll get that pop on the hand. Oliver, do I, is it, am I telling her the full truth? Uh-huh. I burns them up. Wow. Even in their workspaces, like when they working for me and then whatever, the spirit said, that this, Listen, Madison, yeah. don't do this or tell him this or tell him to change this and the other whoop de whoop. Yeah. He got a computer over there because I, I didn't know that this thing was going to happen to his computer. Wow. But the spirit told me <laughs> that morning. Yeah. And then when you call, I said, girl, <laughs> did it, Oliver. <laughs> I said, girl, well, let's get, well, girl, listen, come on, because the spirit told me this was going to happen for you, girl. So this, I've been waiting to tell you this, how this yeah. is going to go. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know the computer was going to tear up, but I knew he was going to get another computer and, and my shit was going to be delayed. Right. I knew, I said, the spirit telling me my shit going to be delayed. Right, mama. right, right. But perfect timing, though. Right. Divine timing. But this is what yeah. we're going to have to do the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you listen. I do always listen. Yeah. I always, well, I try. Do, do like, right, yeah, most I, time. I, yeah. I, I try to always <laughs> behave. Now, Lakara, can you tell the people out there that are watching how to reach you, how to contact? Well, see, the spirit telling me this wig is too far, too far, far back. Let me, there it is. Bye. Uh, <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> now, that's a gift that God gave me. Yes. Natural humor. Yes. Because you are hilarious. Just natural humor. That's that I know that is definitely my gift. And just like you said earlier, the book says that the heat will make your gifts make room for you. Yes. Your gifts will make room for you. And yes. this this is always my gift has always been made room for me. I've always been able to make people laugh. Even when I was into the adult film industry, my movies were like parodies and spoofs. And right. Funny. <laughs> Even though it was sexually driven, it was right. always funny. Right, right, right. And I was very successful in that. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, yeah, keep keep listening because you, because we're going to keep talking to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Lakara, tell us where they can find you. Yes, um, I am on Instagram and Facebook at Lakara with the Gift. And I have a website for those that are interested in booking readings at LakaraWithTheGift.com. We will be putting that down here in posts. We'll, so you guys now see it. Well, well, you got By the time y'all watch this, you'll see it. <laughs> Oliver going to put that down on the screen, LakaraWithTheGift.com. And then Lakara's Instagram is at Lakara. It's at Lakara with the gift. Yep. Um, and check out my YouTube, uh, my YouTube station. You just you can do Lakara the gift. Um, and we did uh, season one, and uh, all eight episodes are there. And then some other press that I've done as well, so people can really go and just see the work that we've done. The spirit is telling me you have an upcoming book coming. You know what? Let's see what I'm talking about. She do you? A, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is that I have been like. Oh, I got to write another book. I got another right one. And here, and God said, go write the book. So, confirmation. Anybody shot to <laughs> <laughs> Well, Lakara, I do thank you so much for, for coming on my for spotlight session. Me. And I do thank you so much for being patient with me. No, thank you. But I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know where, but I just, I just know. Thank you. And like, people, I want you to apply these things to your life. And this is the way you can really tune into your spirit. You may not know something is going to happen good for you you just gotta know you never not know when you just have to know and as long as you walk through your life with the knowing that's it it will manifest oh it will it will you can't doubt you gotta know no matter what you see in front of you the rocks the the, the, the blockages the stops the nose that is yes. you've got to just know and it will manifest it will 
Thank you for having me. This has been awesome. Thank you so much, sister. I love you. I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> you ain't drank none of your wine, but that's because what I off wanted the to be able to, you know. That's what off the camera. <laughs> you ain't want to be. You ain't want the drunk spirit come through. Well, girl, the tail left the child. It's, we stepped on these grapes at eighteen so twenty-seven. I, 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 I love a, I love a good glass of red wine, but I was like, you know, let me get into this interview and focus. You know, yeah, you would focus. You'd be good. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a spotlight session with T.S. Madison. My guest has been LaCara with the gift, and we enjoyed this. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.